Cassandra is being developed by a group of engineers around the world. Now, in Apache projects, the people who can make changes to the code are invited in, and they're called committers. So we gathered a bunch of committers and asked them, what are they excited about? Now, these are the perfect people to ask, right? These are people who are trying to solve problems every single day. They're working their jobs and using Cassandra and developing Cassandra. So it would be kind of fun to find out what they think about Cassandra 5. So how about it? What are you excited about in Cassandra 5? Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm John Haddad, Apache Cassandra committer since 2017. You may be asking yourself, what am I excited about for Cassandra 5? Well, as someone who spent the last two decades focused on efficiency, I am very excited uh, for support for Java 17 and its low latency garbage collectors like ZGC. Now, the goal of these collectors is sub millisecond pause times and more of a set it and forget it model than alternatives like Parnu and CMS, which generally required uh, some advanced degrees in both physics, chemistry, and math in order to understand how to tune correctly. Uh, and the project, unfortunately, defaulted to them for a long time. Now, as a consultant for Apache Cassandra, I've spent a lot of times helping teams tune GC. And for a lot of folks, this can be pretty overwhelming. In fact, most of the time, people just want to rely on the project to provide same defaults for them. They just want to take whatever the project has and put that in production. Now, as the project matures and memory management improves, we'll see improvements in both the duration and frequency of GC pauses. That means we'll see less frequent GC pauses, and when they happen, they'll take less time. This will make it easier to run denser nodes, meaning your cluster will be less expensive to run. I love the idea of saving money just by doing an upgrade. And who wouldn't be excited about that? What are you excited about? Thank you. I'm Andres de la Peña, Apache Cassandra committer since 2016. What I'm excited about for Cassandra 5 is dynamic data masking. It is a security and anonymization feature that is available in many databases out there, and that is long overdue in Cassandra. It allows to obscure sensitive information while still allowing access to the masked columns. It replaces the real values of the columns by obscure generic data. For example, it can replace numeric values by just zeros, or it can redact the values of a text column so the user only sees some characters replaced by asterisks. Dynamic data masking doesn't change what is stored on disk. Instead, the masking is done dynamically at query time. For this, it consists on a series of regular SQL functions that transform the cell values. These are generic functions that can be used in regular queries so users can decide to use the masking functions to produce obscure query results. Additionally, administrators can attach any of these masking functions to the columns of the table schema. That way, the unprivileged users will always see the masked data, even if they don't specify the functions in the query. The set of available masking functions is relatively small at the moment, but there are plans to include more functions in the future. Mm. Anyway, users can use their own UDF functions for masking, so it should be pretty easy to add custom types of masking. And what are you excited about? Thank you. Uh, I'm Vinay Chela, Apache Cassandra committer since 2019, and I've been associated with Apache Cassandra and its community for more than a decade. Uh, what am I excited about Cassandra 5 Well, Cassandra 5 introduces lots of new features aimed at providing and uh, you know, more guardrails for developers to prevent common mistakes and improving the overall stability and performance of the database. Um, so with the introduction of guardrails framework in Cassandra 4.1, we were able to implement soft and hard limits on user actions. This allows us to restrict actions like such as, you know, the number of columns per table and preventing the use of allow filtering on queries. Um, in Cassandra version 5.0 though, uh, we have added several new guardrails to enhance the operated experience, increasing the reliability and availability of Cassandra, and also focusing on user experience. Uh, from the living experience of operating and running like hundreds of production critical clusters, believe me when I say I'm so thankful for these new guardrails, I really mean it, and that makes operated life way easy. For example, restricting the drop key space commands 
and implementing the limits on your you know, column value sizes, it basically codifies all of your best practices and helps operators and users avoiding lots of these aha moments and oops moments and avoid you know, making these catastrophic uh, mistakes in your production critical clusters. These guardrails you know, certainly help prevent lots of these oops moments and dropping production critical uh, you know, important key spaces and losing data due to any of your user or operator errors. Thank you. What are you excited about? Thank you. I'm Mick Samueva, Apache Cassandra Committer since 2016. What I'm most excited about in Cassandra 5 is the way that we are and continuing to find our feet with real open source with our diversity and our engineering hygiene. By real open source, what I mean is we're not just open source that's controlled by one company. We're not open source that's thrown over the wall or open source that's used just for marketing. We have multiple vendors, multiple companies, and multiple employees behind our contributors. This goes to the heart of many ASF principles as well, with longevity and sustainability of our tech. When you look at how it looks after our user base, it brings to the technology more different points of view, a richer set of features and applications that are out there that we want to address. This helps us commoditize the technology which goes to the heart of what open source actually is. It also encourages diversity, especially amongst our development community. We are a community of builders around the world, and we get to transcend many of our day-to-day -day boundaries. But the more diverse we can create that family, the more fun we can have, and that's really important for all of us. The last point is engineering hygiene. As more and more of us, a more diverse group of us come together, we have to continue to uh, approach our engineering practice with not just prestige, which Cassandra has long been known for, but also a degree of hygiene. This comes from building our QA and our CI to build better trust amongst us, but it also is what's enabling some of the radical features which are coming in 5.0. Stuff like Accord, we can't get over the finish line if we're not all working together as a team. These are the things that I'm really excited about. That's me. What are you excited about? Thank you. I'm Jordan West, Apache Cassandra committer since 2020. And what am I excited about in Cassandra 5? Honestly, as an on-call engineer, it's just really more sleep. The Cassandra community has really invested a lot this year in ensuring that Cassandra 5 is even more bulletproof and reliable than ever before. And as an operator of hundreds of clusters and thousands of nodes, this matters immensely to me, my team, and my nighttime comfort. One of the things I'm most excited about is the new transactional metadata feature. Uh, the Cassandra subsystem that handles membership today is one of the causes of some of the worst incidents we deal with, whether it be data loss or really oddly configured Cassandra clusters. Uh, these are the ones that you know really take a lot of time to unwind and deal with. And having this new system that takes a more consistent approach to membership instead of the previously eventually consistent approach, I think is the key to making Cassandra stronger when it comes to cluster membership. Also really excited about the new mem tables. It means we can take more writes faster. Uh, this is really important when you've got an ML job running overnight and just hammering the cluster and the odds of it waking me up now is lower and lower than ever before. And when we do have incidents, we're gonna have more insight into Cassandra than ever. Uh, the new virtual tables, new diagnostics, more metrics, it's gonna let us solve incidents faster. So I know with Cassandra 5, when I go to bed, I'm less likely to get woken up. And when I do, I'm gonna solve our problems faster and get back to bed faster. And what are you excited about? Thank you. My name is Ekaterina, and I'm a committer on the Apache Cassandra project since 2020. 
So what am I excited about Cassandra 5.0? Well, in the future versions of Cassandra, the community will be offering developers the opportunity to be more efficient without sacrificing performance or scalability. This may seem like a joke, but it's true. With the implementation of the Accord Distributed Transaction Protocol, developers can free up time for other tasks while the system continues to function seamlessly on commodity hardware. The Accord Protocol solves two issues that previous consensus protocols could not address, achieving globally available consensus and doing so in a single round trip. With the Accord Protocol, developers can now implement ACID transactions at scale without having to code complicated workarounds. One example where the global consensus is required is bank transfers, where money is abstracted from one account and added to another uh, should be, and this should be done precisely in that order. The observing process needs exclusivity to prevent uh, other processes from making changes that can lead to inconsistencies or unexpected results, such as allowing a transfer from uh, an account that has gone below zero. Isolation guarantees that only one process can make a change at a time. And if two processes are competing for the same data, one of them will have to wait for the other to complete. The new syntax that developers will see in the Cassandra theory language is contained within the begin transaction and commit transaction declarations. Everything inside these transaction markers will happen atomically and in isolation from other processes. For example, let's say we want to transfer $20 from Alice account to Bob's account. The Accord protocol is still a work in progress, but the paper is already available and developers are encouraged to join the SF Slack channel Cassandra Accord uh, to learn more about this exciting development and connect with developers. And what are you excited about Cassandra 5.0? Thank you. Uh, my name is Brian Mir Lambov. I'm with DataStax and I've worked on Core Database since 2014. I became a committer in 2015. Uh, what I'm excited about uh, in Cassandra 5 is uh, local storage pluggability and the various ways that we're making use of it now. Uh, we've had a compaction strategy pluggability for, for some time. Now we're introducing pluggability of SS table formats and memtable implementations. And these come with two uh, alternate uh, solutions that uh, people can use in Cassandra 5. Uh, one of them is the BTI SS table format, which is an SS table format made for fast drives. SSDs are a couple of orders of magnitude better than, than spinning disks in uh, finding data. So they need data structures that are uh, faster and can use, take advantage of their efficiency. Uh, our solutions are actually our implementation of uh, the BTS stable format the indexes there are so fast that um, when they're used in memory, when they're cached in memory, they can be faster than uh, custom in memory structures like the key cache. Uh, what this lets us do is do away with the key cache, which is less management for you, uh, for the operators of the, the database. Uh, one of the other things that we can do away with is the index summary, because this is now part of the, um, of the indexing structure. You don't need to manage a separate uh, space for, for the index summary. The new format is drastically better at querying white partitions as well, which is a separate improvement. And it's more compact, which means more of it can fit in memory and things can be better, faster because of this. Uh, the, the other improvement that we've introducing uh, is an improvement of mem tables. We're introducing a new tri mem table implementation, which is uh, using a tri data structure. Some of you may, may know that uh, about 10 years ago, the Adaptive's Radix tree um, data structure uh, brought a bit of excite excitement to the database community because uh, there's a new data structure that we can use for indexes. Uh, we're building on top of that and we're going beyond that. Uh, we're doing also things like cache friendly fixed size blocks to make it even more efficient than, than the adaptive radix tree. Uh, so we end up with something that's really fast. Um, uh, and it's also something that's stored off heap, which means that uh, the garbage collector doesn't need to look at it. Uh, because the garbage collection doesn't need to look at it, uh, there's less garbage collection that we have to do, much less garbage collection that we have to do. Uh, the new structure is also more compact, which means you can fit more data in the same memory allocation. And as a result of all these advantages, uh, one of the things you can see is sometimes we can double the write throughput of the database just by changing the memtable implementation. 
Thank you. Uh, and what are you excited about? Thank you. Hi, my name is Lorena Pullen, and I've been an Apache Cassandra committer since 2021. What am I excited about for Cassandra 5.0? CEP 26, Unified Compaction Strategy. Unified Compaction Strategy brings together our old legacy compaction strategies like CT uh, size tiered and level uh, compaction strategies and um, allows you to have uh, workloads that are either read or write or both, read heavy or write heavy or both. Um, what's really great is that you don't need to know anything to migrate to UCS. Um, there's zero overhead. It just works because it understands the uh, legacy strategies. And you don't need to have any knowledge about how CTCS and LCS work anymore. There's parallelism, parallelism in how uh, Unified Compaction Strategy works, which has made it um, a much faster um, compaction strategy, which is great. And it has reduced the space overhead that you need. No more setting aside 50% of your disk space to uh, cover your compaction strategies. Finally, the very uh, most important is that it has a scaling factor that allows you to tune to what you need for your Cassandra cluster. So if you need it to be write heavy, you can tune it to that. If you need it to be uh, read heavy, you can tune to that. And if you just want something in between that works well for whatever your workload is, uh, unified compaction strategy is really the answer. So uh, I hope you get as excited as I have. Check it out. And what are you excited about? Thank you. I'm Benjamin Nurel, and I'm an Apache Cassandra committer since 2015. What I'm excited about for Cassandra 5 is SAI, Storage Attach Index. In 2016, SASE was added to the Cassandra code base, and it came with a set of innovation. Unfortunately, we did not invest enough in SASE, and we had to market experimental in Cassandra 4 because it was not matching the standards that we wanted to set for the future of Apache Cassandra. SAI will fill that void. Uh, it, it has been built on top of the SASE innovation and comes with its own set of innovation, like enabling user to uh, index multiple column without having scalability issue, or is, is optimized for disk space usage, and it also optimized some query like um, numeric range queries. There is a plan also to add some uh, new improvement like support for or or like. Um, SAI will enable a new set of query capability for me without the drawbacks that uh, secondary index or SASE had. And you, what are you excited about? Thank you. And what am I excited about? I'm excited that it's happening. We're finally going to get some features that I've been asking for for a long time. And some of those features are really going to change Cassandra. So it is exciting. And thanks to everyone that participated. That was a lot of fun. And I could see that it was way outside of your comfort zone, but I'm appreciating the fact that you actually participated. This is a really cool idea. I hope we get to do it live someday, probably at Cassandra Summit. And speaking of Cassandra Summit, everyone you saw here today will probably be there, plus many more committers. There are a lot of them. And they'll be at the Cassandra Summit if you want to ask them questions or talk live. Just talk about the project. These are people who understand how it works. They work on it every single day. And if you're ever interested in learning how to commit code to Cassandra, they're the right people to talk about. And they're always available on the ASF Slack. Thanks again, everyone, for participating in today's panel. <laughs>